Well, school is supposed to challenge its students, but this last year has tested kids and teens like never before. There's been school closings, very few reopenings, and a lot of differing opinions on the return to in-person learning. Then there's the digital divide. As 23 ABC's Kristen Vartan reports, the last 12 months has made local educators realize the need to put certain systems in place to help kids succeed. I just remember uh, Friday the 13th, bringing all 47 school districts together, some serving 40,000 students and some serving, you know, uh, 20 something students and thinking about what is it that we can do here in Kern County to meet the unique needs of the children in Kern County. About 30% of our children live in poverty. And so we felt that we need to keep school open as long as possible. But schools closed temporarily two days later. 24 out of 25 of the largest districts in the state of California have already shut down. And then the entire state. When schools look to close down for a while, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Office and the districts jumped into action. Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Mary Barlow, saying they were providing hotspots, tens of thousands of devices across all districts, training for staff to use the virtual technologies like Zoom and Canvas, and social and emotional support. Because that is what made, made it possible for people to get through the pandemic being with one another, seeing that smile, and just checking in to know that we're okay. We're, we're okay together. And students and teachers have been expressing that sentiment to each other, even from a distance. Mom, I love you. I was super happy because I missed them for a really long time. Meanwhile, KCSOS and local school districts becoming aware of a digital divide. 30% of our children live in poverty. 22% of our children are English language learners. And if you combine those who are English language learners and live in poverty, those are the students who are suffering and having the most challenge with this transition to digital learning. That's why when they could bring back students back in October, they slowly did, starting with those who needed it most. But then came the winter surge that hit the country and our community hard. A limited stay at home order and then schools shutting down again. You know, the winter time was a very heavy surge across the country. We felt it here in our community. Approaching 2021, a beacon of hope in the form of a vaccine. Cases going down and schools slowly but surely opening back up. Most districts, Barlow says, are planning to bring back students in April and through May if they haven't already. Face to face is not going to be the same right now. I mean, you're talking about less than half the kids in most of the classrooms. There's no such thing as recess. Um, lunches and meals will not be eaten on site. It's, it's going to be very, very different. The socialization I think that a lot of kids are hoping to get it is not going to exist for a while. But some students think it's worth it. And I get to see my friends in person and I get to see my teacher in person too. Kind of relieving to see that they're okay and just to be able to, to talk to them and ask how their day was. There's a lot educators have learned along the way. Barlow saying the importance of communication with parents and students for one, plus how the crucialness of meeting students according to their individual needs, whether academic, social or emotional, and the need for data. It was through data KCSOS in the three major school districts in the county, the Kern High School District, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the Bakersfield City School District discovered a drop in grades. The Kern Integrated Data System announcing a 14% increase in D's and F's among their 6th through 12th graders in fall 2020 compared to 2019. We're using our research from our kids' database to better understand those needs and then adopt best practices. So the most efficient and effective way to address that. We almost call it a Marshall Plan. And, and, and I say that because after you know, World War II, there was a plan that was developed to rebuild, right? To rebuild Europe, to rebuild America. We need to rebuild our education system. One piece of that, she says, could be summer school acting as a fifth quarter or fourth trimester in early July to catch students up. Early onboarding in August, Saturday academies, and extra hours after school with small tutoring groups. Kristen Barton, 23 ABC News, connecting you. And Barlow also says virtual learning is something that could stick around post-pandemic if parents or students want that option.